Welcome back to the Blue White Players Show. I am your host, Aeneas Hawkins, joined by the marvelous, the spectacular, the ultra talented Keith Goon Conlin. We're presented by our good friends over at Sioka Dealership. Your soul. You're right. But it's Mama Hawk. Mama Hawk is She likes. Hard. Hearing the name Keith, I'm cool with it then. Listen, you're man, allowed to if Mama Hawk said it. Because that's the thing. You're going to get me beat up when I go back home and I keep calling Oh, you I'm going to get you beat up no matter what. <laughs> I'm going to get beat up you're, regardless. You're going to get beat up. I'm just picking my poison it's well at this deserving. Point. I agree. But, yes, uh, my man, great. Mm. Uh, we got through BYE this weekend. Tough Finals, game, man. you know, very, very tough game. We'll call it 1-0. Oh. Yeah, we're 1-0 oh versus that bye. Call it 1-0. Absolutely. Oh. Some, some, some big-time teams at the top showing some signs of weakness. Ohio State, Maryland, Ohio State. Ooh. Let me tell you something. Go ahead. Let me tell you something. Go Ohio ahead. State looks very beatable, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. paying attention. I do think they got some star power still. Obviously, oh. still some talent there. But offensive line, I don't know if you got the chance to watch them. I did. Not impressed with the unit. What have you seen? Uh, with Ohio State, it is – they don't think they put it together yet. I really don't. I mean, their defense isn't like that, like, classic Ohio State defense. Can you – I mean, you're still close oh, yeah. to the program. You grew up in the Cincinnati area, this and that. So you might know some of the Ohio State guys, but I can't remember the last time I don't know an Ohio State defender's name. No doubt about it. Uh, you look at Like, the, you think about that. I mean, you, you, you think about the, the Winfields, the Hawks – the Belisario, the, like the, uh, it, the, all these guys. It, and that's just, the, I mean, before the Bosa brothers, Youngs. Yeah, the Chase Youngs of the yeah, world. I mean, they the, still have that D, the DN44. The, I refuse to speak his name because he absolutely destroyed us two years ago. Yeah, now JT is the real deal. They still have some talent, like you said. But absolutely. You, you can't name one of those household names. Yes. Lo- like, lock, they, like they normally do. They normally have a surefire top three pick somewhere on that defense. Right. It doesn't look like when I watch them they have that much talent this year. Yep. And it's exciting because, hey, it's a good opportunity for Penn State to potentially not only win the game but to really make it a good one so yep. and then maryland it's just like one did one of those maryland things yep you know they have the ability and they can they can hang with people uh they truly did hang when they were winning and this and that but it's just like the horses take over and then it's like something happens where they're just like they just mail it wheels off in the off. end it, it really it really happens like that yeah but did you stay up late late night I did stay up late late night. I stayed up late enough well, to did watch. Did you stay up late late night to watch a game, or did you stay up late late night to do so? Oh, look I, at this I was smart. up Mama late Hawk, watching I'm a telling game. You, Mama Hawk. <laughs> I, was, I, I refuse to answer that question, but I did catch on grounds of man coming the, at you. The, on grounds, of, and I'm not going to go into those details here on this show today. But I did get to see the USC Trojans, the backup quarterback of Arizona. Not to get too far off in the weeds, but it's a Very good nice. friend of mine. Oh, really? It was in there. It was electric, man. He's been waiting for an opportunity. He's been working hard and almost went and beat USC, buddy. I was. I went away with the wife and her parents. We went to Gettysburg. We're hanging out all day Saturday. We did Chris Stapleton Friday night. Got up Saturday morning. Got down there. Watched a little football. This and that. Did some museum tours. And then uh, did the dinner. Came back. Wife wasn't feeling well. At like 2.30 in the morning, she's like, oh, that quarterback from, from Arizona is really good. So you tell your <laughs> boy. You go. I'll, I'll, he's got at least one more fan after that Arizona tell game. Tell your boy that. That's on awesome. Saturday. That is awesome. But, uh, I, I, like USC tried like thirty times to give that game away. They were doing everything they could. I, it's interesting, you know. They're coming. They're coming into town soon. They're oh, gonna, I know. They're oh, gonna, they're gonna get it. I mean, what? What? You know what? My, I can't wait for, like, happening in the new Big Ten coming up. What's that? Okay, so you know that USC and Notre Dame have this rivalry, right? Have Correct. we talked about this? We've talked about this. And it just drives me absolutely crazy. When they play in, in South Bend, Indiana, which is a cold area, mm-hmm. the game's in October. Yep. But when they play out in the West Coast, it's always the last game of the year. So how is that a rivalry? Right. So they're afraid to come east because of the weather. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the Big Ten, guys. Yeah, good luck, Welcome man. to the Big Ten. You get caught up there in Minnesota a little late oh, in the year. I don't even want to go to Minnesota or Wisconsin late either. in November. I'm from Ohio and Pennsylvania. Yeah, I've never been anywhere more than my I life. I want to go up there. So. No, not a shot. Uh, I do love sitting around on, on a Saturday not having uh, anything to do. We're not watching a Penn State game, not tailgating, not doing anything like that, and just like just watching a lot of the other teams. That Oklahoma-Texas game, wow. Yeah, it was a fun wow. game I did watch. not get to see much of it. But I did see the highlights at the end, and uh, we were at the museum, so we were listening, and some guy was like, oh, I'm an Oklahoma fan. I don't know. They're, they're, 
they're tied right now, and Texas is going to go for the winning field goal. And I was like, oh, damn, you know? Yep. A half too much- hour later, I was like, <laughs> what happened here? Dude, you killed me here. What the heck's going on? And then you see that, that, that Oklahoma had won that game, which was great. Good for us. And I swore up and down to my friends. There's no way that they're going to put Oklahoma in front of us. There's no way they could jump six spots because they beat the fourth team in the country. And lo and behold, here we are still sitting at number six. It's unbelievable how that works. And Oklahoma's at five. But we have our chance. They play nobody. that They really don't play that many people coming, going, coming up where we have the ability to just keep jumping. For sure. So, and, and so we'll, we'll we get... have our own destiny in our hands. No, it's it's – the battle internally, like you said, you know you play Ohio State, so you still play Michigan. Maryland will probably find themselves ranked here, too. Sure. You got the opportunity to control your own destiny. We'll be right back from the break with Keaton Ellis, big-time fifth-year captain with the program, to talk more about what Penn State football has to do in order to be successful and what's allowed them to find some of that success early on. Stay tuned as we come back. See you. Sioka Toyota of Williamsport invites you to stop in today or check us out online. We have the smart path to your next Toyota, like the all-new Crown, BZ4X, the all-new Grand Highlander, Corolla Cross Hybrid, Sequoias, and more. Over 100 new Toyotas here and on the way. Don't make a $1,000 mistake. Choose Sioka Toyota of Williamsport and see the Sioka dealership's difference. Buy or reserve yours today and see for yourself why Sioka Toyota is the only stop you need for your next new car. Sioka Toyota, it just feels right. This is the place where roadside markets are filled with fruits and vegetables, small batch jams and made from scratch pies, where mountain trails are explored with friends with names like Ghost and Traveler, where award-winning wines, craft-made beers and spirits are raised, hearty meals are served, and nights are shared under star-filled skies. This is Center County, Pennsylvania. To find out all that's happening, visit us at happyvalleyagventures.com. Hi everybody, Mike the Mailman here to tell you about a state college company that will help you follow the Nittany Lions to their bowl game, Collegiate Athletic Travel. From charter flights and on-site motor coaches to professional staff, the entire trip is easy and carefree. And with their 47 years in the business, you know you're in good hands. You'll get a game ticket and a lot more. Make memories to last a lifetime. Be there next time with Collegiate Athletic Travel. Old Dominion No Bad Vibes Tour Friday, December 1st Rice Jordan Center With special guest Chase Rice And Kylie Morgan Tickets on sale now At Ticketmaster.com Old Dominion Live in Concert Brought to you by Messina Touring Group into fall with a new Kia from Lion Country Kia. Right now, get a 24 Kia Seltos for 5.25% APR for up to 48 months. A new Sportage plug-in hybrid at 0.9% APR. Check out our 23 Sorento hybrid for as low as 4.5% APR. And don't forget, all 2023 and 2024 Kias come with a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty. Stop in and meet with one of our sales experts today and coast into fall at Lion Country Kia. We want to see you in a Kia. Welcome back to the Blue White Players Show presented by Sioka Dealerships. I'm Aeneas Hawkins. He's Goon Conlin, and we are joined by Captain, State College Ooh. resident, fifth-year guy, Keaton Ellis. Keaton, it's a pleasure to have Good you. Stuff. Thank you. Good I, stuff. I appreciate the intro. Thank Great you. having you here. It's, it's amazing to see you have gone from a, a wide-eyed State College native freshman in 2019 in winter workouts to now a captain on the program a guy playing a lot of meaningful snaps at a safety position that's boasted a ton of talent. How do you feel about the start of this year? Talk me through some of the emotions as you are entering and you're playing now under your senior year. Yeah, you know, you know, every game, it, it feels like it means a lot more. Um, and just uh, to have a, the opportunity 
to go out there with your brothers, you know, every Saturday and, you know, put on a performance that, you know, not only makes yourself proud, but others proud too. Uh, you know, it's, it's meant a lot to me. And I think now more than, you know, other years, I've just kind of, you know, taken a step back and really like cherished those moments and really appreciated that. Yeah. Is, uh, I guess my question is, was, is coach pretty cool with the fifth year guys? Like, he takes a little he take, – he's not as hard on the fifth-year guys as he is the younger guys. I mean, do you see that? Because I know my coach was the same way. It was like he treated you more as a peer type of thing, or is he busting your chops still? Yeah, you know, he's, he's still busting chops. Um, but, well, they have to. you know, then, you know, that's their job to do so. But, you know, just, you know, your relationship grows, you know, every year, you, yeah. know, you know, being, you know, with those coaches and uh, being with the program. And, you know, you already know the ins and outs. So, you know, he's, right now is looking – you know, to me, to, you know, guide the younger players and, you know, make sure they know what the standard is. Well, the standard is pretty high right now, man. Is, I got to give it, it to you guys. Yeah. The right. standard is the standard, as Coach Franklin would say. As that's, always. Yep. That's his. That's the ultimate Franklin snippet right there. But he stole yeah. it from Tomlin then. Is that where you got it from? I think so. Yeah, it makes sense. I don't. It really does know. make sense. It makes complete sense. Yeah, we, we they, go by they probably went to some convention. We go by convention that. together. Yeah. The one to know. The one to know. know. Is that Tomlin too? No. no. Okay. Anyway, um, Keith, James, James is the first one I've seen to use that. I think. Yeah, I haven't noticed it before this season. I love it. You mentioned the young guys, Jalen Reed, Zaki Wheatley. We just had Kevin Winston Jr. on last week. What have you seen from that bunch? Uh, you know, anytime you get one young safety or one young corner who's playing a lot, it's impressive. You got three of them realistically yeah. who have played a ton of snaps over the last year or two. How have you seen them develop? Yeah, you know, those guys came in ultra talented, you know, already ready to play and. Um, not physically, but, you know, mentally. And that's the biggest thing, you know, with young players and is can they, you know, keep up mentally with the game in order to showcase their skills. And those guys have done so, you know, since the day they stepped on on campus. And, you know, I'm just really, you know, been it's been great to, you know, kind of, you know, guide them early on and then watch them kind of, you know, take the reins off and let let them, you know, kind of do their thing and handle their business. And they've done a great job, uh, you know, for, for us, you know, this season and even uh, last season. Yeah. Long lineage of state high guys here on the football team at Penn State. Uh, I would say in 1994 and five we would be fighting because you're a state high, state high grad. Okay. The offensive line is declared ward on state high grads and wide receivers. Interesting, so, interesting. Just so you know, <laughs> why uh, those two groups of the whole team? <laughs> this is what we needed the challenge. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. But uh, this season, I mean, how's it going for you right now? And then, like, talk to me. Like, what did you? I mean. I guess what the fans don't really know, what, do you, what, is, what does the football team do on a bye weekend? Yeah, so, you know, bye week, we practice like we normally would practice. The whole week? Um, yeah, the whole Friday. week up till, up till Friday. Okay. Um, and then we get Friday and Saturday to, you know, you know, take your time for yourself or time to go and visit family, you know, which is huge, you know, in the middle of the season because, you know, don't really get that time, Yeah. Um, you know, to really sit down and be with, be with your people. So uh, just kind of taking advantage of the extra time that we do have, yep. you know, um, not only getting ahead on UMass, but, you know, able to watch tape on other teams that we got down the road. Um, and it's, it was, it's really been a great week for us um, in, in preparation and, you know, just kind of trying to get better and, you know, not worried about, you know, the next week, but just getting better as a team. Because we know if we do that, you know, the sky's the, sky's the limit for, for yeah, our team. So like, I mean, I'm a Philadelphia area guy, Hawks a Cincinnati guy. He has, we haven't used to worry about how to get, to get home. Yeah. On bye weeks, you know, yeah. get, get rides from somebody. I mean, did you get home all right? Well, yeah, I <laughs> hit a couple Uber? lights. I hit a couple you lights. Hit a couple <laughs> lights. A couple but, uh, no, but I always truck. say the best part about about a bye week is you could actually watch football. Yeah, that's, I mean, how many guys yeah. do you know that you played against or you played with, high right. school and or college that you can go out there and watch that because you normally can't do that. Yeah, and that's that's huge for me just to you know get the perspective of the college football lens, you know, and just, you know, watching, you know, getting to watch different teams and, you know, how they're performing. And, um, you know, obviously you know, some players that I've either played against will play or, uh, you know, played with. So uh, it's just, it's a good time to kind of, you know, sit on the couch on Saturday, no doubt. Uh, wake up, watch football, maybe eat, but watch football, um, you know, watch football the whole day, whole day. And it's, it was really a, a great day to, you know, just sit back and, you know, be a regular guy. So you're like a little day. goon. Yeah, no, I love watching. Just wake up. Yeah, drink some up. coffee. Watch some <laughs> turn football, the game on. Turn the game on. Take you know, your boys out. Never kick, change, kick the man. feet up. Right, next thing you know, you'll be like 330 pounds exactly. laying on the couch and yeah, I might blink in. I'd <laughs> be a, a crazy blink, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you, I want to kind of dive deeper into it though. Yeah. I think it's a funny joke. 
we used to be excited to go home because we were yeah. so far away. Does it feel like you're always home? Do you actually take the time to go sleep at your childhood home for two days or do you stay in your apartment? How does that even work? Yeah. So for me, um, and this started out, you know, freshman year, you know, I kind of wanted to, you know, not distance myself, but, you know, I wanted to have a college experience. I wanted to, you know, feel like I'm growing up, you know, I don't want to be on the leash anymore. So sure. um, I do, obviously I went home for dinner. Uh, it was Saturday night, went home for dinner, uh, you know, with the, with the parents. So I usually get, oh. try and get there once a week, once every two, three oh. weeks. Oh, so my mom hates it, but you know, that's, Why she, hate it it? she wants to see me every day. Oh, okay. I thought she, I thought she was mad because she had a cook for you. Like, <laughs> no, she, yeah, she loves that. Like your mama's cooking is a half a mile, ten miles, five miles away from you. I'd be there four or five nights a week after dinner. Don't worry about it. I get the leftovers. That's there you sure. go. <laughs> I, well, I that's wanna, good. I want to sure. ask you, Keaton. You're you know a captain on this football team now, which was something that you earned from day one with your work ethic and your character and all those things that have been apparent about you from day one. But when we look at this defense and we look at the talent that's on that field and I look at guys playing unselfishly, now, I've asked other kids who aren't in as prominent of a role as you what it's taken for the defense to accomplish that. But as the leader, yeah. what does that really take? You know, being, you know, such a talented group, um, you know, everybody wants to be the guy and, you know, make the plays. And, you know, earlier on, uh, you know, in camp and, you know, at the beginning of the season, it's like if everybody just does their job, the plays are going to go around. So, you know, we're more than capable. Um of, of being you know great defense and we've shown that and then that, all that takes is everybody's d do their job and execute and the plays will come to everybody and you know you do your job everybody eats it doesn't matter who we bring on the show everybody's saying the same things we are going to do this yep. everybody's yep. going to have this happen for them and it's really an un an unselfish approach and it's impressive man again yep. in 2023 goon you know there aren't I a lot love of teams it, man. That i are absolutely love it i told you two years ago when i started doing, when we started doing the show i was like all right man I have a real good feeling about these yeah. guys. I mean, something's changed. It's clicked in yeah. where it is about, you know, your teammates, the university, and, and, and then, you know, about your team. That's, that's the bottom line. I absolutely love it because, you know, you go out and fight for one person. You go out and fight for the guy next to you. I mean, I didn't, you never, you never, you never want to bring war into this thing, but it's very similar to that, and that is, you know, I don't want to let my brothers down. Yeah. I do not want to do that. and I don't want to lose this game because of a play that I didn't make or that was made on me. Uh, that's a horrible feeling, you know? Yeah, no doubt. Keaton, another thing I want to ask you about, and I think it's one of the cooler things that Coach Franklin does is when a guy is named captain, he brings him up to his office, he'll call the parents, and he tells everybody together, yeah. you're not a first-generation Penn State football player, you're the second. Your father was a, a great player here as well. Yes. Talk us through that moment when you found out that you were being a captain, and more importantly, when your parents found out that you were being named captain. Yeah, you know, it was, you know, a truly amazing moment, you know, in my life. And, you know, it's such an honor um, and, you know, to earn the respect of not only the staff, but the players uh, is, is a tremendous honor. Um, and, you know, m my dad having played here and he, he fully understands and grasps, you know, what that really means. Um, so it was very emotional for him um, and, you know, obviously my mother. Um, and just cut, just for the fact, you know, it shows a lot about character and, you know, I wouldn't be the man I am when, you know, without, you know, those two people. So, you know, they always take pride in my successes and in my accomplishments. Um, so it was really just a great, great moment for, for our family. That's cool. It's a huge so. thing, man. I know they're proud of you for doing it, yeah. for being the captain. I know the teammates love you because I can see how they react. Like I tell Aeneas and I tell everybody every week, you can tell how good a team is or how, how, how tight of a team. Did you look at it this weekend? Oh, yeah. When guys get sacked and see how many offensive linemen run to the quarterback to pick him up, or yeah. when a guy gets a sack, how many guys celebrate with him. And I'm not talking about over the top celebration, but just like right. enthusiastic. And like uh, we were talking last week about Manny getting mad at guys for not celebrating yeah. with their teammates. Yeah, that was, that was and I love surprising. that. I mean, I absolutely completely, I mean, I have bought into the, 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 these last two years big time just from meeting you guys and. You know, knowing where, you know, where I had played back in the day and Aeneas did and all that stuff and how it's still the same. And we talk about, you know, old school, new school, but it's, we're the same school. And that's the, yeah. I, I absolutely love it. Yeah. And so proud of you guys and you guys keep working and then great things are going to happen. You own your own destiny. That's right. That's, that's right. I mean, they can sit there and me complaining about Oklahoma jumping and new and then, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We, you guys control. Yep. I said we. I'm allowed to say we. I'm allowed to. <laughs> we control our own destiny, but you guys control it on the field. So uh, we're, we're really excited. 
Yeah, I guess. So yeah. one question I want to ask, um, you know, you are, you're off to a hot, hot start, really haven't been challenged by too many opponents. When you have gotten challenged, you've obviously been able to rise to the occasion and win and win dominantly with the meat of the schedule still left on the table. What do you think has been a factor that's kept this group motivated that will continue to keep you guys pushing towards excellence as you get to the grind? And, you know, so, you know, we've been in this position a lot of years, you know, <laughs> the majority of years sitting in the same spot we've been sitting. Um, and, you know, we haven't gotten the results that we wanted. Um, and for us is it's really as a team, you know, and there's going to be a new team every year and I've seen it every year. Um, and it's how can we be the best team that we can be at the end of the season? And this this point during the season is is huge for trying to find out who we really are um, and what we're going to be when the postseason comes. So, you know, for us, it's it's just continue to get better, realizing what works, what doesn't work, what gets us beat, what doesn't get us beat um, and executing. You know, we're more than capable. We have a great understanding of what we do have just straight off talent and skill. And if we execute, we are very confident uh, that we will have success. And I'm going to tell you, you guys have a lot of faith in your coaching staff. Definitely. You truly, yes. truly do. Offense yes. and defensively and special teams, you guys truly, yeah. truly, truly believe in your staff. The best in the country. Yeah, that's great to hear, man. And, you, and you, your players are saying this. You're not just saying the company line. I can hear it in your, in your voice. So one thing we're doing this year is asking guys about the NIL. Yep. And what have – has the NIL done for you and helped you, your family type of thing? I mean, yeah. again, we see it on television every week. We talked about Shador Sanders and, you know, him jumping around with his million-dollar watch. Yeah. And that's what people see. But I want to know, like, the, uh, the nuts and bolts, the heart of it. You know, that's what we're asking each of our guys. Yeah, so, you know, for me, you know, especially, you know, being a, a local kid and, you know, my family being so close, um, it's it's – for me – I'm not a big glitz glamour guy for the most part. Um, so it's just, you know, being able to, you know, live comfortably because before, you know, it gets hard. You know, it's, you know, my, my parents support me, um, you know, but to have be able to, you know, give them, you know, be like, I'm good. Like, I'm OK. I don't need this. I don't need that. Um, you know, I'll be all right. You know, I can go get groceries for a whole week and be and be good. Um so it's just, you know, little things like that for me and just like my extended family getting into games um, and, you know, when they do come up, you know, making sure, you know, I'm treating them good and, uh, you know, have good hospitality with them. Um, and for me, the NIL stuff, it's like I've been trying to use it as an opportunity to not only give back, but, you know, to show appreciation to the fans sure. and the supporters that make it all possible, you know, so anytime I can do an event and, you know, talk to a kid or, you know, do different things to, you know, reach and touch the community. I think the NIL has really, NIL space has really opened that up. It really has. Um, yeah. In a major me... way uh, for for kids, um, athletes to be more proactive within their community. Yeah, I remember, I mean, Aeneas and I have done this show for two years. We were talking to somebody last year and he was asking, like, you know, what did you guys do when you were in school, outside of school? Did you guys have other friends and this and that? I think what's done, what the NIL has done, you guys having these events is, is talking to people but, and yep. getting to know them and knowing the real Penn State fans and yep. who they are and how much they love you and how much you are loved as a Penn State football yep. player. So, right. my it's man, huge win. continued luck. No doubt. Congratulations. Appreciate Thank you for you the interview. It was awesome, Appreciate man. you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank we'll, you. Go, baby. We'll be right back with fifth-year senior guard Sal Wormley out of the break. Stay tuned. Hey, Penn State fans, it's game time, and Sioka is hitting the field with 42 dealerships and 25 brands in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. That means more choices and the perfect new or pre-owned vehicle priced to fit your budget. Plus, factory-trained service experts are just minutes away, and you can feel confident you're doing business with a family that treats you like family. We're a proud partner of Penn State Athletics and preferred dealership group of the Penn State Alumni Association. The Sioka dealerships experience the difference. This is the place where roadside markets are filled with fruits and vegetables, small batch jams and made from scratch pies, where mountain trails are explored with friends with names like Ghost and Traveler, where award-winning wines, craft-made beers and spirits are raised, hearty meals are served, and nights are shared under star-filled skies. This is Center County, Pennsylvania. To find out all that's happening, visit us at happyvalleyagventures.com. 
Hi, everybody. Mike the Mailman here to tell you about a state college company that will help you follow the Nittany Lions to their bowl game, Collegiate Athletic Travel. From charter flights and on-site motor coaches to professional staff, the entire trip is easy and carefree. And with their 47 years in the business, you know you're in good hands. You'll get a game ticket and a lot more. Make memories to last a lifetime. Be there next time with Collegiate Athletic Travel. Old Dominion. No Bad Vibes, no bad vibes Tour. Friday, December 1st. Bryce Jordan Center. With special guest Chase Rice. And Kylie Morgan. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Old Dominion, live in concert. Brought to you by Messina Touring Group. into fall with a new Kia from Lion Country Kia. Right now, get a 24 Kia Seltos for 5.25% APR for up to 48 months. A new Sportage plug-in hybrid at 0.9% APR. Check out our 23 Sorento hybrid for as low as 4.5% APR. And don't forget, all 2023 and 2024 Kias come with a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty. Stop in and meet with one of our sales experts today and coast into fall at Lion Country Kia. We want to see you in a Kia. Welcome back to the Blue White Players Show. I'm Aeneas Hawkins, joined by Goon Conlon and my guy, one of the toughest O linemen I got to play against, Salim Wormley. Sal, how are you doing today, brother? Doing good, man. How are y'all? Doing really well. I'm I'm doing well, but not quite as good as Keith over here. He's been Goon over here. He's been waiting on offensive linemen for the last I, six I, weeks. I'll, I'll just I'll just touch your hand. I'm, I don't need this. Right, there you go. There we go. Yeah, that's better. I gave him the old Goon handshake, and he had you know, a little battle wound going in there. Yeah. He was yeah. I, that's a, that's a mistake you only make once with Goon. It's all good. It's all good. He's, he's hurting. I understand. I understand. It was a. It was seven two on steak. He was eating to hurt his hand. I thought. You know. <laughs> did you go to the dinner tonight? Did you yeah. Well, all right. Well, no, let's I go. Did. What was it? What was? What it? do they have tonight? Come on, uh, baby. Victory dinner is there. We have a victory dinner after a bye week. Uh yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, we, we, we came off. Of, we, yeah, came off a dub, but they have crab legs, oh. steak, oh. lamb, shrimp. Just all the all the. <laughs> all the big name course meals. Yeah. All, all the big ones. All everything to get your stomach going. What did you get tonight, Sal? Mm-hmm. Me personally, I'm over I stick with the steaks. Okay. Something big, simple. Oh, yeah. Bring another one home for later. Oh yeah, they got they have to go boxes now too. Yeah. The to go boxes. boxes. Let yeah. me tell you something. The it's, NCAA had snipers outside if yeah, we if not we anymore. had walked out with like a, an extra steak. Not anymore. If you buy groceries, oh, you are a fool goodness. on yeah, the football team. There is yeah. no reason to. Everything, everything we get food wise, there's always a school box. They uh, always ask me to take something home. Not only that, goon, I get I'm on I'm friends with on Snapchat with all these guys, and they'll post on Sundays after games. They got Chipotle in there. They'll get KFC in there one day. They get sub. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather have a steak and a couple crab legs. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. I don't need I don't need fast food. No, basics, baby. Mm-hmm. Well, it's all good. I mean, do the offensive line was still sit together and just absolutely gorge? I and mean, they see you coming, and the chefs like oh, they're like sweating. Like, okay, let's go. I'll be honest, more this year is the most I've ever seen the team so intermingled. Like O line sitting with DBs, DBs sitting with the quarterbacks. Like it's really just grab your big plate and just go sit next to somebody, go crazy. See, I used to sit next to the defensive backs on like a, on way trips because they um, would need half their meal. Like, yeah, I mean, I'll take that. I'll take, <laughs> take that. that sandwich. Take this. Right. No. Done me great. I mean, look at me. I mean, you have this to look, this to look yeah. forward to, Sal. Because you really don't have to do that. We just go up for seconds and get a full plate. Well, let me tell you a story. <laughs> seconds were allowed. We had this five foot four little Italian man from Brooklyn. <laughs> so I'm on my first road trip, 1992, 91, I think it was a freshman. Uh, I got up and we traveled to, to Temple and they had cheesesteaks. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go get up a second cheesesteak. And all the other o and the older guys are like, hey, hey go, go, go get a second one. Get a second one. You know, and I was like, oh, all right, yeah. I, I stood up. 
Oh, man. He went off. You're too heavy. <laughs> You're too heavy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I couldn't get it. And I didn't learn my lesson. And then we were at the Rose Bowl in 94. And I went to get a second piece of prime rib. And you went to the Rose Bowl last year. Yeah, yeah. At Lowry's <laughs> Beef Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. See? How many plates do you have? Three. God! <laughs> <laughs> See, I get yelled at for not eating enough. <laughs> Sal, you understand, man. It was like it was like I, I was put on this earth to block people. Yeah, eat steak and drink beer. And <laughs> the old man took the steak away from me, man. He took I, one I, of like, those three. All days. week we talked about the older people like on oh, the Rose Bowl. They're like, oh man, wait till you try the Lowry steak. Yeah. Just, as much as you want, as much as you want. So I go there and I get a piece of steak, and they're like, hey, you know. And I'm like, can I get a bigger piece? I'm like, hey, come on up anytime you want. As many times as you want. And I went up. I stood up a second time, and Joe lit me up. Oh, man. <laughs> lit me up. And I was like, I literally almost wanted to cry. <laughs> I'm sitting next to Tony Pittman, who's like 112 pounds, and he's not eating his prime rib. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Oh. Yeah, can't no man get between me and my food. Oh, oh boy, I love it. Happen. I love it. <laughs> this is what happens when we bring office alive on the show. We get yeah, all the first, 11 minute the food first. tangents. I mean, I was upset. I said, can I have an offensive lineman to talk to? <laughs> Yeah. You know, and then we have Anita over here who's sitting there. Like, oh, she's all have a diet coke. Let's yeah, okay. now. I'm fine. I'm full, guys. Oh man! I offered him a piece of pizza before. He was like, oh. Oh. <laughs> I said, "That's not up. the Anita side no. That's, That's fabricated." Not the Anita's you know, Sal. Yeah, I saw me nibbling on a piece of pizza right? when I walked in. He's like, "Oh, I can't eat this crust. <laughs> it's yeah. too much." I'm not going to sit here and just let you guys do this with me. I'm, I'm going to move and change the topic here. Phil Troutwan yes. has obviously been able to do a bunch of really good things, not just in recruiting, but with actually coaching the guys that are in that locker room. I've seen the offensive line. I've played against you guys every day. Every year you guys have taken incremental steps forward to the product that we have today. What's it taken for that group to go from point A to point B as a guy who was here when the offensive line admittedly had some struggles uh, yep, back in the yep. day? The main thing is uh, Trout has done an amazing job just leveling up himself as a coach every year. You know, every year we I've had with him, he brings people in that show him different techniques, talk to the old linemen, talk to him about different ways to run certain concepts. So I think Trout himself every day trying to get better in his coaching style and different ways that he could teach us how to block. And then the guys themselves putting in the effort, putting in the time, really sitting there listening, the digesting what Trout is saying. I think those two factors put together has been extremely helpful for the O line. We talk we've taken steps that we've never done before. Yeah, talk to me here. Who does he bring in? We have Joe Thomas talk. What? Yeah, we yeah Joe Thomas have came talked to us before. Uh, How is that not released? I mean, that's like <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, uh, the other center awesome. for the Chiefs oh, needs to go uh, here. Creed not Humphrey. The, Humphrey. Yeah, he was, was, he was here a couple times again. Not in state college. Uh, Zoom calls. He'll, okay, he'll come take to us. Uh, and he had another guy come and talk to us, just just big time alignment, just that's that played the game for years. And that's know what amazing, doing. man. Yeah, I mean, Creed Humphrey's only in the second or third year. Uh, he's already been in two old, Super Bowls. Well, not, not Creed Humphrey, the old one. You're uh, thinking it was Newski, yeah, Wiz. yeah. Well, yeah, well, he he probably talked to you live because he was here, obviously. Yeah, he lived he was in the state college. Yeah, okay. he was here. I got Wiz. a Wiz story actually. Go COVID ahead. PJ must for not. It was before we were allowed back in Lash. We went to State High to go run 110s, trying to stay in shape. <laughs> And we see Wisniewski doing O-line drills by himself. P.J. Mustafer is like, hey, if you need one-on-one -on -one reps, since you, nobody can practice, we'll do them with you. Now, P.J. Mustafer is a little bit better handled or equipped to handle one-on-one -on -one reps with Steve Wisniewski, but I'm there now. I don't have a choice but to take these one-on-one -on -one reps. So when I tell you for an hour and a half, Steve Wisniewski manhandled me and stayed high on a random Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> That was my life. That's the culmination of it right there. But back to back that's to your guess. No, this was a lifetime no, experience. I mean, seriously, yeah. you had that's yeah. a great experience. For, I mean, you probably learned more from getting your booty kicked for an hour and a half. Yeah, I learned I wasn't an NFL football player. <laughs> that's what I learned that day. I started going to class and going way more consistently. That day. Oh my lord! I became a better student out there on that field. So, Sal, <laughs> Jersey boy. Yep. What brought you to State College? What brought you to Penn State? I mean, me. I'm not. I was never a big football fan. Never really watched college ball or the NFL. Nothing like that. It was really just whatever offers came my way, or whoever I was talking to. And Pitt State just ended up showing a whole lot of love to me. It was just the way the coaches talked to my mother, to my family. Just the way everything felt here. It really felt like a family environment. And my mother felt comfortable with me going to a school like this. And I, I like. I love the school myself. You know, it was a big time school. Great education. Yeah. Love the players. Knew uh, Caden Wallace and Devin Ford before they had 
committed to come up here, and I already knew they was coming. So, like, I just knew they had something special going on here, and I just love the atmosphere. So that really made me come here. No NFL or college, nothing like that, huh? Nah. Just played the game to play the game. Yeah, I, I just played it because I was big. You know, 6'4", <laughs> freshman year, the high school coach is coming up to me. Uh, you play football? Nope. He's like, yeah, come to practice tomorrow. Yeah, you do. <laughs> now, now I play football. Well, that's, that's great. That's all it was. <laughs> oh, man. I just, you know, when we were in school and like you talked about, you're talking to Wisniewski, you're talking to Joe Thomas and this and that. They, I, I used to love watching NFL games on Sunday just to watch like a guy like Joe Thomas. Mm -hmm. that, obviously, he was well after me. But back in the day, I mean, you learned a lot from those guys. And that's just, it's different hearing that you really didn't have that football and this and that growing up to look at it. But, I mean, Good for you, man. That's that's freaking. I know that's really really impressive. Yeah. yeah, I mean, personally for me, I think watching football is boring. Playing it is so much different what than watching fuck? it. I just feel like I don't know. I like we, if you're watching it, you got to deal with the ads. You got to deal with the timeouts. I gotta nothing going on. We're gonna talk about red zone. You network. sound like my mother watching the football. <laughs> watch the red man. zone network. It's just the NFL. No uh, commercials. Seven straight hours. I don't. I don't know. Because even when they just sitting there in the huddle and you're just watching, like you don't know what's going on. Like you get bored fast. I get bored extremely fast. It's different from just, so. Okay, so let's slow that down. Let's slow that down because obviously there's hours and hours and hours of film that you're obligated yeah, yeah. to go do as a uh, Penn State football. That's different. Player. That's 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 when you're working at your craft, your job. Okay, you, know? when you watch a film. You're, you're looking at this guy like you got to go against that guy. Oh, in a couple my, my days wife's here. over here looking at you like you don't need to watch football all weekend. And I'm like, come on, yes I do. <laughs> come on, you're, nah. you're making life way tougher for going over oh, here. Man. So man. when you get home on a let's let's call it a Monday like today, it's an off day. Yep. You had nothing to do. Yep. You're probably not cutting Monday night football on. Not at all. So not what are you all. doing instead? Uh, playing games. I'm a big game guy. I play a lot of games. Okay. Or I'm watching Supernatural TV show. I just started. <laughs> it's actually my second time watching it. Or I'm. Literally just watching TV or playing the games. I don't. I don't do football outside. Ah, I mean, of football. Okay, so then there's a, a real honest to god question: How does your mother understand the college recruiting game? She did it. Uh, I mean, there's because my parents really didn't understand it because in '83 when they came to get my older brother, they were you know they, 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 we we were filled up the Eagle fans and stuff like that. But it wasn't like we were college fans. But like my my father knew what football was and knew who Joe was. But yeah. Like, I mean, it had to have been, like, the most bizarre thing in the world for her. Yeah, that's why. I, no, I got like, what the hell are you talking about? These people are going to give you an education. They're gonna give you, like, <laughs> to come play a game, you're gonna, they're going to give you an education. I actually got a funny story about that because it's one of my earlier offers was Howard, HBCU, great yeah. education and everything. Immediately, I got the offer. She said, you're going to Howard. And I said, no, I'm not. If I'm playing football, I'm not going to Howard. I don't want to go there. And she sat because there. Because you knew it wasn't, like, high division one? or you Yeah, just I, just, I just knew it wasn't, like, I can get a – Better, higher okay. division. Like, I can go to a different school. And she argued me to death for about 30 minutes to an hour. And I just, <laughs> no, I'm not going here. But, like. But it was your first offer, though? So, she wanted you to take that first offer? No, nah, it wasn't my game. first. It was, like, my third. But it was an HBCU. She wanted me She wanted me to go to an HBCU okay. and things like that. But I had different goals. But one thing I really love about my mom, she ain't know nothing about how none of this goes. Yeah. She's asked me questions every day. So after I got my first offer, and then. Really, my head coach, Mike Judy, is the one that really walked me yeah. through everything. He taught me how things work, talked to my mother, told her different – like, they really just work together. Like, listen, your son's really good at this sport. He's going to get a free education out of it. She's probably <laughs> like, you're kidding me. <laughs> she, right. actually, she actually cried when I got my first offer. So she should have. Yeah. yeah. Any so, offer you get, she should be crying. At, at what point did you – like? At what point did the switch flip or maybe the realization hit where you were like, okay – I'm really good at playing football. I can not only go to school for free, but I can probably go be a starter, which you are now, a guy that's got NFL aspirations too. Like, when did you get serious about football if it's not something that you were yeah. naturally passionate about? Yeah, yeah. Football really was just something for me to stay in shape in high school because I, I love to eat and I was gaining a lot of weight. So it was really a consistent way for me to stay in shape. But after my junior year, I got my first offer from Bowling Green University. And then during the off season. Like, during spring, as I'm just sitting in classes, more and more college coaches is coming, taking me out of class, talking to me. I'm getting more offers. And then I had a talk with Judy, and that's when it really clicked for me, like, this is something I can take to the next level. Like, this is a stage where I can do my dreams and my aspirations and do whatever I want to do in life. Like, this is the next stage in my life. So 
after that offseason, I really started to lock in and take football way more seriously. Mala come to a lot of games here? Oh, yeah, she can't every game. She don't miss a game. Does she love them? <laughs> Do you think she'll be a Penn State fan when you leave? Uh, I don't know. She's not a fan of sitting up in the stands in the cold. She, she, she's not a fan of sitting <laughs> She won't in the be stands. a Penn State fan in the stands <laughs> in mid-October. She'll be, at, she'll be at home watching on TV, but I don't know about being on the stands. In the right. stands. Okay, so – uh, like we talked about it with all of our other guests and stuff like that. So I really want to know, I mean, do you have any good NIL stories for me of what you're doing? I mean, you talk about your mom. Is it's a lot easier getting her here, getting her a hotel room type of thing. Is there anything in the NIL that helped you out? I mean, the biggest thing with NIL that has helped me is, is giving me more opportunities to help the people that I love. Yeah. Uh, as you know, I'm not a really flashy person. Everything I got on is free. Got from the team. So, That's the way to do it, man. Dude, I'm still this is what I love about I'm South. 50. I'm still the same way. <laughs> but, like, everything – so, like, any extra money I have, anything I get from deals, you know, if a family member needs help, I'm there to help. If something goes down, I'm there to so help. So that's what exactly why I absolutely – I'm supporting the NIL because of that. Yeah. I mean, there's stuff that you can do right now that we couldn't do back in the day, and it's absolutely awesome that you're doing it. Yeah, these past two years have been extremely blessing for me and my mother, me and my family. I'd be able to help them out extremely more than yeah. I have been in the past. So you know, I'm, my, I'm extremely grateful for you. Know, my like, biggest fear is what? it's like three years from now, me and the just sitting here when he's like 81 pounds, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> he's like a little pencil. Yeah. You know, I, I, the only fear I have is that you were here when you weren't getting an IL money, that you do get it now and you appreciate it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I fear that three or four years from now, when guys are expecting when they get here and they get it from day one to day, the last day on campus, and it's like sort of like, they don't appreciate it. They don't understand why and how they're getting it. And that's why I love talking to you guys about it. So, and that's why we're trying to help out with the NIL stuff. So, yeah. The biggest thing is just for the coaches to, they constantly remind the players like the money's there is secondary. Like your main focus here is your education. That's the biggest thing. Play football, be. help your family out. Sure. Like everything, ex- every, anything monetary is just extra. That's just, just to help you out. So, just, Keep your eyes on the main goal. Good Keep stuff, your, the main thing the main thing. Well, no I won't shake it. your hand hard. <laughs> Keep it going, <laughs> man. You guys, man. You guys are doing great this year, man. I'm very Thank proud you. of you guys. You. Keep all it, okay. man. Keep Sal, up, man. Keep appreciate up. you joining us. We'll be right back on the Blue White Player Show. Sioka Toyota of Williamsport invites you to stop in today or check us out online. We have the smart path to your next Toyota, like the all-new Crown, BZ4X, the all-new Grand Highlander, Corolla Cross Hybrid, Sequoias, and more. Over 100 new Toyotas here and on the way. Don't make a $1,000 mistake. Choose Sioka Toyota of Williamsport and see the Sioka dealership's difference. Buy or reserve yours today and see for yourself why Sioka Toyota is the only stop you need for your next new car. Sioka Toyota, it just feels right. This is the place where roadside markets are filled with fruits and vegetables, small batch jams and made from scratch pies, where mountain trails are explored with friends with names like Ghost and Traveler, where award-winning wines, craft-made beers and spirits are raised, hearty meals are served, and nights are shared under star-filled skies. This is Center County, Pennsylvania. To find out all that's happening, visit us at happyvalleyagventures.com. Hi everybody, Mike the Mailman here to tell you about a state college company that will help you follow the Nittany Lions to their bowl game, Collegiate Athletic Travel. From charter flights and on-site motor coaches to professional staff, the entire trip is easy and carefree. And with their 47 years in the business, you know you're in good hands. You'll get a game ticket and a lot more. Make memories to last a lifetime. Be there next time with Collegiate Athletic Travel. Old Dominion. No Bad Vibes Tour. Friday, December 1st. Rice Jordan Center. With special guest Chase Rice. And Kylie Morgan. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Old Dominion. Live in concert. Brought to you by Messina Touring Group.
coast into fall with a new Kia from Lion Country Kia. Right now, get a 24 Kia Seltos for 5.25% APR for up to 48 months. A new Sportage plug-in hybrid at 0.9% APR. Check out our 23 Sorento Hybrid for as low as 4.5% APR. And don't forget, all 2023 and 2024 Kias come with a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty. Stop in and meet with one of our sales experts today and coast into fall at Lion Country Kia. We want to see you in a Kia. Hey, welcome back to the Sioka Dealerships uh, Blue White Players Show. I'm uh, the goon and my man Aeneas over here. Uh, so the next segment here is our Atlas Letterman Minute, and uh, I, this is a special one to me because it's, it's with Jeff Hardings, and Jeff was a five-year roommate of mine, uh, the best football player I've ever played with at Penn State, and there's no lie or denying it in that at all. Uh, just an unbelievable human being and an unbelievable football player, the whole uh, academic All-American for four years, All-American for two years, All-Big Ten for four, so just an absolute great human being a good friend and uh, about as skinny right now as Aeneas. Uh, he's about 112 pounds, I think. <laughs> yeah, Jeff was one of those guys who, I, honest to God, he had to force feed to – he came here at 242 out of a little school in Northwest Ohio, uh, St. Henry, Ohio, and he, uh, he he was one of those guys who – he played at 290, So, but he had to put every, every ounce of weight he had on, he had to maintain. Yeah. So he was the guy setting the alarm at three o'clock in the morning to go eat four peanut butter sandwiches yeah. just to try and maintain his weight because he would lose it because he was not a bigger human being. But you're never going to find a better human being and you're never going to see a better football player. I mean, honest to God, I mean, I played with some great ones and I played next to Jeff. I was the luckiest man in America. I played next to Jeff Hardings and Kyle Brady. So I literally was like, <laughs> uh, it's like a little easier. Uh, am I supposed to block somebody here? Jeff's like got like nine guys on the ground. Huh? So, uh, funny story. Watch the Rose Bowl first play of the game. I pull, he pulls. He realizes that he shouldn't be pulling, and he works back and blocks a defensive tackle. No one in this, no one in this country can make that block. No, that's but insane. he was just so big and athletic, and just. Uh, but great interview here for the Atlas Therapy uh, Letterman's Minute. So enjoy it. Jeff Hardings and uh, my hometown is St. Henry, Ohio. And uh, I was at Penn State from 91 to 95. And um, my position was offensive guard. Uh, high school football coaching and substitute teaching at Worthington Christian High School in Columbus. Yeah, you know, I think my recruitment started actually by going to uh, football camps at Penn State. I was really interested in playing at the next level. And my high school football coach, maybe going into my junior year, invited me to go to a Penn State football camp. I think a big reason our little town was even on the radar was Bobby Hoying, a quarterback. He was a very high rated quarterback and Penn State, I'm sure, probably invited him to go to the camp. And um, while, to be honest with you, I don't remember if he went or not, you know, myself and I know maybe one or two other players on my team went to that camp and, um, you know, I guess you don't realize it at the time. Um, uh, but you know, I loved it there. I loved the coaches. I mean, Joe Paterno was a, was a very, you know, they came off two national titles and I loved winning and I was, you know, we, we won a state title and, in, in um, in football at our school. So the, uh, the ability, the, the opportunity, I guess you could say to go to a school and have an opportunity to win a national title. That was very important to me. And then number two, the opportunity to um, have a chance to play in the NFL was very important to me. I kind of felt like if I can start at Penn State even one year, I would be good enough to be able to go to the NFL and have a chance to play in the NFL. And that's, uh, you know, that's what that's what made me interested in Penn State. Um, and then, you know, of course, I wasn't the most highly rated um player like you know i would have probably been like a three star nowadays maybe so you know i was getting letters maybe maybe i would have been a four star who knows but i wasn't i didn't have an opportunity to just go anywhere um so i was very grateful for the opportunity to to choose penn state over michigan state indiana louisville ohio state came in the picture at the end um so you know i had some other good choices but to play for penn state get a national title possibly play in the NFL and I love the campus. So it was a kind of a home run for me. Kajana Carter, you know, best overall all player. He's the reason why we had such a good year in 94. When I, when I having played in the NFL, been around a lot of great leaders, been a lot of, around some good teams, obviously won a Super Bowl. You know, I realized the importance of, of player leadership 
And Kajana Carter had had a, a great confidence that year in us. And the defining moment, in my opinion, of that year was in training camp. And, you know, Kajana, we had a bad day in offense in a scrimmage. And Kajana Carter brought us together and, and, you know, basically was like, that's not us. You know, forget about today. Coach Paterno stacked the deck against us. He knows how good we are. So he tried to make it as hard as possible. And I think I walked out of the stadium that day and kind of felt like, man, this dude is like, he, he's confident in us. And I think it raped, it didn't me anyways, raised the confidence in, in me. And, uh, you know, we hit the ground running that year and and just dominated a lot of teams. And, you know, this side of a, a phantom holding call against Michigan, we would have been up 24 to three and probably ran away with that game. Um, but, you know, that's football. But the point is like, once again, in that game, you know, he always kind of kept us, kept us um, going and, um, you know, by far the, the best overall player obviously we had some great players uh Kerry Collins and and um you know Kyle Brady and I, I won't even go into the list Bobby Ingram you know always came up with big plays and you know we had a lot offensive line probably the best offensive line you know in Penn State history definitely one of the best you know obviously there was a lot of good ones before that um but I don't think since then you know we've had an offensive line like that so it's hard to now, you know, you don't want to just point out one guy, but you asked the question. So, you know, Kajana Carter would give my vote for number one. Well, these kind of questions off the top of my head, there's always two or three that come to mind. I coach now. I, I coach football. And so, you know, I learned a lot from Coach Paterno. Um, you know, I, I think probably the 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 best funny Paterno story kind of is that he was always involved in everything. And just looking, just like I am now, you know, looking around at everything. But obviously, you know, these are very high caliber, explosive athletes running all over the place. And, you know, I'm sure one time, I know one time he was in the middle of the field as a safety, you know, kind of in that spot in order to watch the, the play unfold. And whatever he was watching, he didn't see the receiver coming or the DB, whatever it was. And I mean, he got blasted. Um, but he bounced right back up and started yelling at somebody. And even now I'm laughing because, you know, as a young guy, you're looking at that like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> Welcome back to the Blue White Players Show presented by Sioka Dealerships. Goon. Great show, dude. Great show. We got your old lineman on. We Keep bought on. an offensive lineman on. Look at how the attitude changes. Everybody's all happy. I'm hungry. You know, whether or not, me too. <laughs> me too, after that conversation. Nobody, you know, I, you never want to think about offensive line. You don't want to spend too much time focused on them, but you need them. You got to have them. They're good to have around. Sure. So thank you for both you and my guy, Sal Wormley. Hey, the only time we get mentioned is when, when we screw up. No doubt. No so doubt. The good thing is, it's like I talk about in baseball and in football with umpires and referees. If you know an umpire referee's name, they're not doing a good job. Not a good thing. Yeah. Not so with offensive linemen, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful – I love – the fact that he said that Coach Trout has a guy like Joe Thomas and Stefan Wisniewski coming in talking to these guys just about the little stuff. Yep. Hand placement. Just yeah. it's, it's, it's really crazy. So I hope, I mean, I know that you would watch the, the Jeff Harding thing as an Ohio guy. And, and that was a great interview. Jeff is just a, a wonderful human being. And dude, I'm telling you, unbelievable football player. Yeah. Would just absolutely just devour people. Yeah. And he was just so smart, and he played the game the right way, uh, hard, and uh, like he 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 really 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 did these yeah. people. I, I, it's funny that you're able to recall who the best teammate you ever had was. I think every now and then there's a special player like that yeah. who's just a grinder, who's a smart guy, yeah. and will hit you in your mouth, oh, and man. you remember him for the rest of your life. Well, I always, I mean, me and me, and, I, I always had this argument with OJ. Not an argument, and I said, OJ, you're the best athlete I ever played football with. Bobby Ingram was the best football player I ever played with. But Jeff Harding is the best offensive lineman I ever played with. And uh, having done that interview, we had talked, and, and Jeff was saying that Kijana was the best all-around football player he played with. So that's pretty good when you get a little uh, – yeah, you get a lot of different guys getting mentioned. Yeah, wherever you're getting mentioned in that group is a good place to get mentioned. Yeah, so the, the 94 <laughs> offense, I was number 12 of the, of the 11 when I was starting off. And I, I don't know how. <laughs> number 12. I mean, I, I, yeah, I started, but somehow I was the 12th best player. I, I, it was very odd to me. It was very uh, very weird, but uh, – Talented group, man. Yeah, man, we got a great weekend coming up here. Homecoming. You know, it's it's great to get everybody up here for the week and you know, all the old alumni come back and stuff like that. I mean, you know, you wish you had a bigger game and, you know, I, but 
I think when they made the UMass game like seven, eight, nine years ago, I think UMass was tracking to be a little bit. They better were supposed to. Team. They were doing that. Yeah, they were definitely doing that. I mean, either way, like you said, it's a big family reunion, man. Yeah. Get all the alum back together. Get the fans together. Uh, last weekend, I will admit, although it was nice to take a little break, uh-huh. you definitely missed Beaver Stadium on a Saturday, man. Uh, it was at one point I looked around, I was like, you know, I wish we had a game. Yeah. I wish we did. But no doubt about it's it. It's good to get your uh, re- recharge the batteries a little bit and get into this weekend, see some friends coming in. You got me coming up, Nias? Uh, say it again. You got me coming up? Anybody? Nobody coming here? up. Nobody coming up this weekend, but I'll tell you what, going to Ohio State oh. the week after that, uh, seeing family, taking some family out to that game. So, yeah, it'll be a good time, man. Big weekend for you, buddy. Big weekend Big for weekend, kid, man. So Big weekend. I uh, hope you guys love the show as much as we love doing it. So uh, I love the, the crowd that comes in here at the 19th hole. The best. Our sponsors, Lion Country Kia, Atlas Therapy, and CFA dealerships are just absolutely fantastic. Uh, thank you all. Uh, Let's get a big win, buddy. Let's do it, man. You don't lose on homecoming. Never lose on homecoming. 1-0. and We'll be back next week. Thank you for joining us as always. Talk to you soon. See you.